Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. My guest today is Anita Klopfenstein. Anita is the Chief Information Officer of Little Caesars Pizza, a role she's had for roughly five and a half years now. She takes pride in running her organization as a profit center, and she works closely with the franchisees who run the majority of Little Caesars stores to create customer-facing digital innovations, as well as operational innovations at the same time. Additionally, her team provides IT services for the Detroit Red Wings, the Detroit Tigers, uh, the arena and stadium that each of them play in, among other organizations. And prior to her current post, Anita was the Vice President of E-Commerce and Consumer Systems at Panera Bread. Anita, welcome to Technovation. It's great to speak with you today. Thank you, Peter. I'm happy to be here. Wonderful. Well, Anita, let's begin with Little Caesars Pizza. Uh, most people uh, who are who are listening to this will probably be familiar with it, but maybe you could take a quick moment and provide just a little background into the business. Yes, Little Caesars is a family-owned company out of the Detroit area. Uh, they've been in business for many, many years. Uh, we are worldwide. We have over 5,000 locations in over 27 countries, and we are the third largest pizza company in the world. Wow, that's a, 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 quite, quite a bit of scale that you have. Um, and talk a bit about your role as Chief Information Officer. What's within your areas of responsibility, please? Well, as Chief Information Officer, not only do I have uh, the privilege and opportunity to support all of our stores and our franchisees uh, everywhere, but we also supply services to Red Wings, the Detroit Red Wings, the Tigers, Little Caesars Arena, outdoor venues. We have a food manufacturing plant as well as our Blue Line distribution actually ships our products to our stores and, and many other areas. So we supply all of the shared services, the enterprise application systems, the point of sale systems and platform systems that are used in the stores, all of our digital media online ordering, uh, pretty much uh, everything and data analytics that we provide to our stores. So we're, we're really pretty, pretty busy group. It sounds like it. And I mentioned at the outset that you've been in role for nearly five and a half years now. I wonder if you could talk a bit about the IT organization you inherited back in 2017. Well, when I first came, we were just starting with rolling out our online ordering platform. We didn't have very many stores hooked up. It was still a testing the teams are also pushing out a uh, store platform system that had been written in Delphi and PHP. So um, that that was that system was struggling and had a lot of performance issues. So basically came into a team that um, really didn't know where their priorities were. Do I do I fix something? Do I start on this new thing? It's the next person who called me is what I would work on. So we really tried to work and pull the team together to find out from them, what do you need to be successful? What obstacles can I remove from you uh, so you can focus on stabilizing our environment, pushing out on online ordering and getting it stable? So that took a, a lot of time and effort to get that team to trust that I, I wasn't going to beat them and yell at them. And it was great. Uh, we, we sat down and we agreed as a team, here's what our focus was going to be and here's the dates we were going to hit. We started uh, marching towards getting that system stabilized and rolled out. And, and the team did a fantabulous job with that. They really did. But one of the things that we decided uh, is trying to I, I guess, temper the appetite for our business for technology. And I wanted to make sure that the teams were working on the most critical elements that would move our business forward. So one of the things that I did was to implement what I called the IT steering committee. So what we did was we brought the business together and our IT leadership and we said, here are all the projects that people are having us work on, which ones are really important. And from that, we prioritize those projects, we resource them. Um, I literally had all of the phones to our software developers turned off so people couldn't call and bother them. And then we just focused on those critical elements. And when we started delivering for the business, you know, our reputation increased. We were known as a team that could get things done. Uh, and so by creating that that prioritization and alignment with the business, it really allowed us to kind of make sure that IT was focusing on, on the most critical things. 
And, and as you developed that IT steering com- committee and, and uh, d- uh, identified those most critical elements to focus on, what are some of the things that rose to the top? Um, what, what are some of the things, that, especially in those early days, as, as this transformation, you embarked on this transformation, what were some of the critical elements that you put in place? I think for us, most critical was to complete and implement our online ordering because we knew that that was really going to drive our business forward. Uh, Obviously, our pizza competitor friends already had that. So we were playing catch up quite a bit. And then with our store platform system, it was to once we had it stabilized, we knew that we could make it better. So we made a decision as a business to rewrite that in in more of a user friendly Uh, easy to train environment in the cloud that uh, would allow us to easily roll out uh, changes to the system. So then we focused on what we call Caesar Vision Cloud um, and making sure the POS, uh, literally you can now train and use that point of sale system in in 15 minutes or less, as well as it making it easy for the person who's running our, our back kitchen to know what pizzas need to be made, when they needed to be made, Uh, And then at our landing station, who got the pizzas as they were coming out of the oven. So that ended up being our focus so we could improve efficiencies in the store, reduce waste and and reduce labor needs. Remarkable and and remarkable efficiencies. It sounds like uh, we're we're driven by that as well. I mentioned at the outset something you mentioned to me, Anita, in a recent conversation, which is you also changed the orientation of the of the of IT to, to operate much more as a profit center. And uh, as opposed to a, a cost center, which perhaps was the legacy of the organization, like so many. Talk a bit about some, that, that journey, if you would, and some of the elements to, to bring that to life. Yeah, that, and that was new for me. I've never worked in an organization where, where uh, I needed to be a profit center within the IT world. And so one of the things that we looked at is what products are we creating for our franchisees or other customers within the organization that we need to charge for, right? So every digital order, our team gets a fee from that. We make fees from um, maintenance fees on our stores that are using our point of sale system. Uh, We also have an internal digital agency. So as we're doing work for different entities, we put together very much like a a contracting consulting company. We put together a statement of work. We put together, here's what our costs are. Here's, here's, here's your, the product that we're going to deliver. Here's what's in scope. Here's what's out of scope. And we present it as, um, do you want to buy our services? And so Basically, that group then completes the work for other, you know, the other companies within our organization and and we build them. So we've been able to think about what are the things that we can build that add value to our organization that they'll want to pay for. Uh, So it's very important for us to really have a good understanding of estimating and resourcing and scoping a project. We can't just, you know, we can't just run over by three or four million dollars and think that that other company is going to be excited about it. So we, we do run ourselves like a, a consulting company. Very interesting. And you mentioned the franchisees there. Uh, um, uh, many of your stores, I believe the, the vast majority of them are, are franchise uh, franchisee owned. And I, I wonder if you could take a moment to talk a bit about the collaboration with them. Obviously, so much uh, um, happens at the store level. That's where a lot of the interactions with customers are and where, where the ultimately where the product is made. Um, talk a bit about the way in which you collaborate with them in order to identify uh, needs and opportunities. Well, one of the things that we established was a Caesar Vision Advisory Board. And this group meets every every three months or so, sometimes more, sometimes less. I'll, I'll grab them on a call if I need to. And we talk about what is it that we need to do or we can offer from an IT perspective that will allow them to be more efficient? Is there is it reporting? Is it analytics? Uh, is our, um, are our systems working correctly? You know, we, we ask for the good, bad, and the ugly because I can't fix things that I don't know about. And it allows us to also give them ideas. Hey, we were thinking about doing X, Y, and Z. Would that be helpful in your store? If I can reduce the amount of time that it takes for you to make a pizza by, by 
helping you do a time study on how things are laid out or reducing the time that it takes to get the pizza from the, the station into the oven, is that is that important to you? Or is there another big thing that's bothering you that I can automate for you? And so that meeting has been really great. We have our franchisees, we have members of our corporate stores are there. And then we talk about here are the priorities that we're working on, are they in the right order? And it's just been really great for us to, to learn and experience what's happening in the store. The other thing that we do is we actually send our teams out, our IT teams members typically work one or two days in a store every year just so they can kind of get an idea of how their systems that they've developed and created are actually operating in a store. So some folks are more, some fo folks I have go for at least a week or so, just so they can experience you know, a Friday night rush, a, oh my goodness, the football game is finished and everybody's coming in and pouring into Little Caesars. Because a lot of times what we think in IT will be so easy to use doesn't quite make the mark when it actually gets thrown into production and, and used. So it's been really helpful for us to work in the stores. And then as our teams are talking and collaborating, someone will raise their hand. Well, that's not what I experienced the other night when I was here. So it, it, it also makes us more efficient um, with our franchisees. Well, you're alluding to something that I find really fascinating that you've you've educated me on, which is the necessity for better forecasting and the sorts of factors that go into determining when there's likely to be a rush, uh, a busy period or not, as the case may be. And I know that you've been developing technology to assist in that. Uh, talk a bit about the pizza forecasting uh, that, that, that you do uh, uh, on behalf of and with your, your stores. Oh, that was one of our exciting projects to put together was to utilizing some ML tools and it, and what the pizza forecaster does is that for every single store that we have, they actually have their own model that looks at their sales, it looks at weather, it looks at community events, and it tries to forecast at any given time what pizza should be being made, be in the oven, be in our Crest Core waiting for a customer because uh, we have what we call a hot and ready model. So between the hours and four to eight, you know, on certain days, we we want to have certain products available to you as you walk in. So you're not waiting. Our goal is to get you in and out of our store in less than 30 seconds if possible. And so the pizza forecaster helps to that back in make line person to it tells them you should have you should be dropping three pepperoni pizzas right now or oh, you're 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 down about two cheese pizzas, so let's get those moving. So, and it helps them. And then what we do is we educate that model. So we take it, here's what we forecasted, and here's what really happened. And there's times we'll, we'll ask those store managers, you know, through a, a series of questions on the screen, what happened? Did a bus drop? Was the weather not predicted correctly? And it, then it just kind of helps educate and train that model to be more and more efficient. You also alluded to the diversity of, of uh, uh, areas that you get involved in with some of the uh, IT services, uh, the Red Wings, the Tigers, the arena and, and ballpark, uh, respectively, that each play in, a couple of casinos. T talk a bit about uh, that diversity of, of the model and the way in which IT uh, needs to flex in order to support uh, different kinds of, of venues such as those. Well, for one thing, with Little Caesars, obviously, it is it is the mothership. So it is very process-oriented. It is, you, we, you must follow the process and moving things into production. It's, it's very, very rigid, right? Escalation paths, emergency cab requests if, you're, if you don't hit your deadline. So, but when you pivot over to the tires and the, and the red wings, they have needs that are a little bit more lean and mean, right? So then we have to take a look at why would I make a, um, a data analyst on the Red Wings wait two weeks to go through a formal process to get some data uploaded from the last, you know, last game? So we work with those teams to say, based on, you know, your risk level, let's change, let's change this up. You don't have to follow quite a formal process. We're going to slim it down for you a little bit. 
that allows them to actually be able to, to function and get the information that they need. The other thing with those is we have to work with the NHL, we have to work with the MLB and make sure we're following all of their guidelines on system security, uh, data analytics, uh, data sharing, things that we, we can or can't do. So it's a whole new set of rules that you have to, to work within uh, and educate the business on uh, to make sure that it, you're staying within their guidelines. But it's a lot of fun. We're, we're not bored very often. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's fantastic. Well, I, I also wanted to ask you, um, you know, the pandemic was such a, well, a trying time for us all, needless to say. And I was really, I found uh, fascinating some of the programs that you put in place to to help people during that period. And I wonder if you could uh, talk a little bit about the program that you, uh, the program that you refer to as Pi It Forward uh, and, and for, for our listeners here. Yeah, I think during the pandemic, a lot of a lot of us were all looking for ways that we could help our first responders and, and other folks. So one of the things that the company did do is they did a million dollar pizza giveaway, uh, which was to, you know, basically to our hospitals and, and, and just a ton of folks just deliver, deliver pizzas. And one of the things that we had some of our, our customers and franchisees say, hey, we want to be able to do that, too. We want to be able to donate or to give things. So what we came up with on the website was the ability to pie it forward. So if you wanted to, you could go online, you could make your own order, and then you could donate a pizza to your local uh, hospital or fire department, police station. Um, and that way, not only did we, Little Caesars, do our million dollar pizza giveaway, but we also allowed the communities to donate and went well above and beyond. It was just a, a great success story. We pulled that together, uh, the IT team, in literally uh, a week. So <laughs> it was a very fast turnaround, lots of hours, but the team did a great job. They, they saw that it was really going to help help the community. So. How, how nice. What a great story, Anita. Um, I, I wanted to also ask you, we've already spoken about a number of trends, whether it's the Caesar Vision Cloud, uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning associated with the pizza forecaster. I wonder, are there other trends you think about that, that have you excited as you look to the future? Oh, yes. I mean, some of the things that we're looking at is how do we how do we do more self-service within um, our stores? So for example, having you come in and having the ability to, to maybe pull those hot and ready pizzas out, scan that technology, pay for it, wave at us and, and walk out the door so you're not standing in line. You know, and then the how do we make our drive-throughs more efficient with maybe voice AI, uh, digital menu boards that can really get that throughput, save some of the labors in our stores. Um, and then how best can we use automation within the stores that that takes the need to to make some of those pizzas that we can be more accurate with the orders more accurate with the toppings that we're putting on and just the throughput making sure we're just improving those efficiencies so we're always looking at robotics and different types of automation that would help that go faster very interesting. Well, I, I look forward to continuing to see uh, the progress made there. It's super exciting. I, I want to also ask you, as somebody who's now been a chief information officer for 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 uh, more than uh, half a decade and has been a technology executive across multiple organizations, as you reflect on your rise through your career, I, I wonder what sort of difference makers there have been uh, along the way, uh, perhaps tuned towards advice for others who might be younger than you who might wish to walk in your your uh, your footsteps? Oh, I think for me, I, I have had some great leaders um, as I've kind of progressed up through my path. Probably one of the most important nuggets of information that I've gotten is that projects will always cost more than what you think, will take longer than you think, and they'll always be harder than you think. So always make sure you're budgeting in some extra time for, for everything, right? So, uh, and the other one is there's a lot of times is, you know, I was a strappy little girl growing up and kind of had a, uh, was pretty tenacious at some time. So um, I had someone tell me, you should always gather, even though Anita, you're a former TV news producer, I'm going to tell you, you should always gather five pieces of information before you make a judgment call. And that, uh, really gives you that well-rounded view of a, of a problem or a potential conflict that you can 
make a better decision on how you're going to react. So I th that person was very nicely telling me not to knee jerk, right? <laughs> so, but but I think ultimately for me as as a leader is really relying on your team and realizing your position as a leader to make is to make sure your team is successful. It's not the other way around. They're not making you successful. You're making them successful by removing obstacles, making sure they have the tools that they need. You have the right people in place. Um, and when you can do that, your team will produce miracles every day. Anita, I was really fascinated to learn as I was going through your background that you began your career as a news producer. And I, I wonder if you could tell the story about uh, beginning your career there, uh, your pivot into technology, and the extent to which uh, uh, you care to share advantages of, of that start, given where you've now ended. Well, for me, I, I worked at a TV station as a news producer. Uh, and if you've ever watched broadcast news, that was my life. It was like getting all everything done, everything back time, just the way it should be, very organized, uh, slamming tapes into uh, the video players and hoping that the countdown would happen before the anchor, you know, queued it all up. Um, and it, it, it was an exciting position. Uh, it, I didn't like it for me because I didn't, I found myself waiting to see the next tragedy and if it was going to be something worthy to get uh, on the headline. Um, at the same time, believe it or not, Apple came out with their very first desktop computer. And I was so intrigued. I got bitten by that Apple bug and um, then took a position in, in my local college's IT department where the only thing I could be trusted to do was to make 21 pin uh, printer cables. And anytime I went to go touch a monitor, they had to remind me to up, unplug it and to discharge the anode lead that, that any person who's 30 or under wouldn't understand. But, uh, but for me, I was so intrigued by it. I loved going in and solving bugs and figuring out where all the needles were in the haystack and trying to get the business requirements and getting them documented and then writing the code to get them to happen. And I think what that position, I, I did finish and, and get a, a degree in broadcasting as well as a degree in computer science. But what that position gave me the capability of doing is to be the universal translator. So I could talk tech and I could talk business. I could take that technology and, and in most cases, um, translate it into what the business areas would understand. And it also taught me to ask questions. So as a broadcaster, as a journalism type person, you're always asking what I call the what about questions. Well, what about and who did this and why did that happen? And so that was second nature for me. Um, and I still do it to, to this day at one organization. I was literally referred to by the CEO as go get the what about girl. And, um, and, and that just helped me, I think, be able to build the bridge between the business and IT. And, it, and it's, it's still something that helps me today. So right, what a great story. I really appreciate you sharing it. Anita Klopfenstein, thank you so much for a great conversation, sharing some details about the remarkable transformation you and your team have led over the course of the past half decade, the remarkable uh, change, but also the remarkable value you're creating on behalf of customers, a bit about your career journey. It's really been a great conversation. Oh, thank you, Peter. I really enjoyed being with you today and you having here.